at the dry cleaner, so you're just gonna have to deal with this. <laughs> when I looked at the Q7 for the first time, I thought, there is no BS here. This is one serious looking vehicle. It's not quirky. It's not trying to be cute. It's trying to be upscale. And it's designed for those who are professional that are looking for a more elite level SUV. When you get next to this thing, you realize it's a beast. There's a level of solidity here that you don't find in most cars. It looks like an A8 on steroids. And from the outside, you expect a level of refinement and that carries right over to the interior. The front of this Q7 has Audi's monstrous hexagonal grille. It looks very truckish. While they may have been one of the first brands to use it, they certainly weren't the last because everybody has copied it now. So it doesn't look all that unique here, but as, as immense as this front end looks, this vehicle's all about safety and technology. There are so many sensors in the front side and rear of this that can help you drive if, if you're one of those people that is you know afraid of getting in an accident or accident prone this thing should almost eliminate that possibility if you're looking at this beast i'm going to make an assumption you probably need the storage capacity of it or the passenger room or just you might use it to tow this is a big vehicle now one of the things is this electronic lift gate which is hydraulically lifted and it, it is super fast. I can push it up, I can get it open and close faster. The motors are actually in the top here. So it kind of uses both with the hydraulics to assist. I really like this lift gate. Obviously you saw I can use my foot to open it. You can close it and open it via remote and this button here. Now, the big thing is here, this third row is electronically controlled via these switches here. Now you can raise and lower them uh, just by holding these two down. And yeah, they're not the fastest thing ever, but there's a convenience level here of having them electronically activated. With all the seats folded down, including the first row, there's a tremendous amount of space. I can't imagine all the things you could fit in here. This would be great for road trips, moving things, you name it. But I would definitely get some type of cargo cover because this carpet, uh, as much as it feels tough, it is pretty plush and probably likely to get torn up pretty quick. You'd think that there's cargo capacity under here? Negative. It, this stores your Bose subwoofer and amplifier and your, well, not spare tire, your inflator kit for your run flats and just all the nonsense goes under here so you don't get any deep well space, which, you know, is kind of a downer with a vehicle like this. But it makes up for it in other ways. But you know what? Let's take a look at this beast in the shop and just see what the underbody looks like. <laughs> You wanted German, you got German. I don't think it's German. This is German. No. It looks like an oversized caliber. Uh, from the outside. At least you pointed that out for me. I couldn't figure out what it looked like. Then you said caliber. I was like, hell yeah. It's not really German, is it? It kind of is, but kind of isn't. Obviously German designed. And then you look at all these parts. You have your actual uh, damper fork is from France. What'd you, what else did you find? The CV axle from Poland, lower control arm from Germany, Slovakia. Uh, yep, the final assembly it's point. European. It is, it's very European. The final assembly points in Slovakia. Your transmission is from Germany and your motor is from Hungary. The suspension is about as hardcore as you're gonna get. I mean, it is so, it looks so overkill on here. Well, just think, when it breaks down and you can't afford your next payment, you can just take some of this aluminum off and <laughs> sell it to the scrap yard and yeah. cover your payment for a while. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the, so, looking at the suspension, this is definitely, you can tell this from a lower-priced mass production car because your hub, your carriers, your uh, 
uh, soy bar links your everything. Yeah, your sh your shock fork, everything is massive pieces of aluminum. The brake calipers. Your brake calipers are one piece. Uh, they are a monstrosity on here. Uh, you have dual ball joint at the. You have dual ball joints at the bottom of the actual hub. You have dual ball joints at the top of the wishbone, uh, and you know when you look at a suspension like this, it's. This is a, an immediate. You understand why this has such a superb ride quality in terms of just keeping the body in control, just damping everything. Is so good on here compared to like any car, you know, below forty thousand dollars. You can't fake this, and this is one of the big reasons why this car and people choose Audis for this level of refinement, and you can tell in the suspension design. So it's pretty cool to look at. We're in the back of the Q7, Scott, and you notice that these fuel tanks look like they are separate. It almost looks like it has separate tanks, but it's not. They're bridged at the top. Is it a really small bridge or what? Oh, it's hard to see. We need to take some, drop some exhaust. Yeah, need to drop the exhaust shafts, and some heel, shields. You gotta drop everything on this car to see anything. Oh, I think I, you said it was an A8, A4 It's platform. an A8 Here's and a Bentley. A4 piece. Oh like yeah, the, a, the like A4. Like the M3. Yep, the, the reused. Uh, you know, when you get to the back of this, it's much like the front. The, the actual subframe is stamped steel. It is a steel piece, however, your control arms, your hubs, uh, you have double wishbone in the back, all, all aluminum, and your lower control arms are you know, massive. Uh, this is, again, the differentiation between a budget car. The bracing, the reinforcements, your sway bar end links are, <laughs> the sway bar end links for this thing are just crazy. You know, most cars are really dinky. You have eccentric bushings back here for adjusting camber and toe, obviously toe, but camber is here. Uh, it's just a really solid looking rear suspension. You know, what's the other thing? You said all the body sealer is like... Oh, yeah, look. Like... <laughs> it just like spackled every so many went nuts. Like, yeah, oh, you gotta get enough in there. God, <laughs> wow. Nice wheels. Mm-hmm. You like the rubber on here, don't you? No, I don't. Why? Because they're run flats. Oh, jeez. And they're 20 inches. Yeah. And you looked them up, how much are they a tire? Three fifty nine ninety nine. Oh my God, how, are there options enough for cheaper tires for this or not? There's one other option. Cross Contact Con Continental, 290 or Snow Tars for 283. We got a customer with the Mercedes GL piece of machinery and uh, he's sick, it's got the same bullshit. So right. he just keeps snow tires on it all year round. Because it's cheaper? It's cheaper, yeah. It probably rides better too. <laughs> probably. <laughs> What's the tread wear on these? I didn't even see. 560. Oh, okay. So they'll, you'll get a couple of years out of them if you're not driving like a maniac. Before we talk about the engine, Scott. You had something you wanted to tell me. I did. You want to know what the big, one of the biggest deals about this Q7 is? Their attention to detail in terms of weight saving for this generation. They cut almost 500 pounds off this car from wow. the previous gen. And it's <laughs> all over the place. And it's from use of more aluminum all over, lighter weight aluminum, more plastics, composites, reduction of steel weight, everything. So that was a huge focus. Now, this is still a heavy ass big car, but I mean, that's a lot of pounds to mm -hmm. shave from one generation to the next. So that's a, a huge positive for this. But no, we, we do have a 2017. And what do we have under the hood? V6, turbocharged. No. <laughs> That's right, supercharged. <laughs> Keep thinking that T's. It's a 3.0 T, <sighs> which means supercharged. <laughs> uh, direct injection, over 300 horsepower and 300 pounds of torque. Uh, this is, the only way I can describe this motor is if you bought a tub of lard and you jammed your fist into the lard. <laughs> That's how smooth it is. I mean, it is, you don't feel any vibration. There's no harshness. It just, you don't even know it's there. That's the way it should be. Yeah, it is really smooth. That's one of the, the best things about it. The people that are buying this, they're not really gonna care about how fast it is or what kind of torque or all that type of stuff. It is just quick and buttery smooth. You have dual intake ports here. One is 
uh, has an actuator on it that probably opens up this intake port under full throttle acceleration. There's a host of coolers, as we saw, in the front bumper on the left and right, one for oil cooling, the other likely is an uh, trans or intercooler for the supercharger. Uh, and you don't hear supercharger whine, there's really no audible tone that this is supercharged, which is very strange as well. Oh, that's what this car is all about. It's quiet. Yeah, you don't want to hear it. The people that are going to buy this. It'd be hilarious if they pumped in digital turbo noise in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could choose between a turbo or a supercharger noise. Uh, the only other thing to note about the front of this car, and this is actually a big deal with it, and it's one of the most important things to cover, is this is all about driver assist and safety systems. Oh, I thought you were going to say it was made for hitting pedestrians so they don't go flying up over the car. No, I think this cheese grater hexagonal grill would probably do some damage to some shins and some thighs. You have to be really tall to get by a shin from that. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm thinking about guys who are playing basketball. You know, if you're six, seven, it's going to hurt your shins. <laughs> you have all these sensors. You get sensor data from the cameras. You get sensor data from uh, both these, well, side-mounted optical sensors and once you get to the higher level trims you actually get thermal sensors so at night oh, you yeah. can have night vision ish all that all that stuff so you have sonar you have the radar for the radar cruise control the long story short is all these sensors help to keep you on the road during your lane assist uh, they help you keep distance from the car in front of you will tell you how many seconds you are from the car in front of you it just helps to keep you from crashing the car, most importantly. The Audi Q7. You can't really look at this vehicle like you would a compact car or a sporty car, a van, or just a regular SUV. This is a premium luxury SUV, and it's larger. So you're not gonna be going tearing up the back roads with this. You're looking for luxury, compliance, just body control. And then of course, refinement. So let's take a quick drive and see how this is. Now I've taken this over all types of different pavement and since we don't have active suspension here, the dampers and the way that the suspension is set up and sprung is extremely comfortable on every surface. It rarely, if ever, cannot handle <laughs> any type of pavement. So if you're looking for this and you're wondering, well, what's the ride like? It's one of the more refined, more well-dampened, and solid-feeling vehicles I've been in in the past year and a half. And part of that is, as we saw under the, you know, under the body of the car, the suspension layout is not some budget setup. Acceleration. This vehicle is so refined. Uh, the, the engine is so smooth. Uh, you get a really strong sense of torque. You get pushed back in your seat. You're never going to feel like this thing is slow despite its weight. Now, one thing that surprises me is I can't believe that it's supercharged. It is so, you know, you would expect some supercharger whine. Uh, you would expect some, types of sign, some type of sign that there's a supercharger here and you really can't tell. Now we're on some choppy pavement here, and this is where the body control and the ride control really stands out because most cars on this segment of just this segment here is ridiculous. You feel your fillings getting knocked around. You feel your spleen getting punched in almost every car. And here you feel it, but it's so isolated before it hits your seats and transmits through your body. It, it's really impressive. The transmission, uh, this eight speed, I'll, let's put this in manual mode. I'll give you a little demonstration. So we're in, put it in downshift here. It auto upshifts for you. Uh, it doesn't hold revs. It's not particularly eager to downshift if you're going to look to drive this in a sporty fashion, this is not the transmission for you. It's not programmed to rev match downshifts. It's not programmed to hold revs. It's purely designed in this state to give you smooth uh, shifting 
and a non-jarring experience. It's on par with just kind of the luxury car levels that the Q7 has. Now let's talk about one of the most important features and just key aspects of this Audi and most Audis. It's called Audi Sense, which is their driver assistance package. This is version 1.0 before autonomous cars. Now, what is all of this? Well, it's the combination of all their sensor data that's from the front, side, and rear of the cars. It kind of tells, tells the system how fast you're going, how far the cars are in front of you, uh, you know, are you going to hit something? And it's combining all these to kind of keep the car on the road and keeping you out of an accident more than anything. I would say if you're somebody that's really afraid to drive or accident prone, I would see it being very difficult to get in a car crash with this thing. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. So um, the car in front of us, for example, if you look at this screen, it's telling you the speed limit down here. It also has lane keep assist on, and this is one of the best lane keep assists I've been in in any car. It is so aggressive at keeping you in your lanes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the cruise control here. Uh, we're gonna set the radar cruise control to 60. Now it already knows the speed limit is 55 miles an hour here. So I've overridden it to 60. But now the thing is, is it knows how far the car is in front of me and I can adjust it. Three steps, one second, two seconds, and three seconds behind the car in front of me. And what it'll do is it will keep me not only in the lanes if it can detect lines, and as you can see, it's steering for me, and it's going to actively hit the brakes and throttle to keep me going at speed and at a safe distance. And the best part is, is this system will also come to a stop completely and then go again if you're in stop and go traffic. And it works so well. Now, I, this is not what it's, it's not designed to be an autonomous system. You wanna always keep your hands on the wheel. You wanna keep your feet on the pedals as much as possible. Otherwise it will alert you, but it does it so well. It's almost to that level of autonomy. And I actually drove this path a couple times to test the system out to see what bugs it had. And I, own, I literally, I was only on the brake pedal and gas once in 20 minutes and it's crazy. And again, the steering assist is so aggressive and so good that I almost don't even have to keep my hands on the wheel, even though you're supposed to. That's, that, this isn't an autonomous system. Again, it's just an assist system. So we're gonna take a turn and see if this car is gonna slow down. There we go, it's on the brakes because it detected a car was in front of me. And it's braking through the turn because the car is still in front of me and I didn't even have to hit the bra brakes or gas to go through the turn. And that's how uh, capable this radar cruise control system is. So we're putting the transmission in manual mode. We're in dynamic mode, which sharpens the throttle response, the steering feel, and the actual transmission behavior. But in manual mode, it's really kind of, you know, I'm in control of it as much as possible. In the turns, this does not feel like a big vehicle. I mean, it it's unbelievable how much body control is here for the size of it. The brakes are really strong. Of course, there's a little bit of warpage on these rotors, I think from probably all the press drives that have been done on it, but the initial bite is really strong. You're not gonna have any problems with this on the street. Uh, it's not going to blow you away in flat out acceleration uh, because of the weight, but it makes up for it in refinement and smoothness of this motor. The interior of the Q7. This is where everything makes sense for me. You can forget about all the technology, all the safety features, all the accessories and everything. When you get in here and drive this car, the level of refinement that you feel inside this cabin is really impressive. In fact, this is one of the first cars I've been in where I actually really enjoy and looking, for looking forward to driving it at night. The ambient lighting, the way this is illuminated has such a high level of quality. I actually prefer driving it at night to daytime if you can believe it. 
Audi has done a great job on ergonomics here. They figured out how to blend European design and American design. You don't have any weirdness with cup holders or storage. Your actual turn signal stocks have detents. They're a mechanical mechanism. There's no digi turn signals here. Your wiper stocks are the same thing. Uh, your cruise control is more normally set up and easy to operate, including the distance for the radar cruise control, how you distance yourself from other cars. Most everything here, anybody's gonna get in here and figure it out, that's the point. The quality of materials in here, it's a mixed bag, but let's talk about the good. These trim pieces, this pseudo wood looking trim and the piano black gloss trim over the center area and the center dash looks really good. It, it's almost the perfect blend of metal looking accents, plastic, uh, matte chrome, uh, gunmetal chrome, everything looks really sharp. I can appreciate the design that went into this. And then you get to the upper dash plastics, this rubberized feeling plastic on the door, the upper trims. This is where it starts to feel more like a twenty, thirty thousand dollar car. And it actually reminds me of the upper dash on the Kias I've been in recently. And go figure, I wonder why that is. But overall, where they've chosen to use quality materials is good. I mean, where you contact every day, the steering wheel, the shifter, the armrest, these are very high quality surfaces. There's plenty of other detail in here from like the startup chimes. Everything has this high level of quality. The way that the center screen uh, moves up and down mechanically and goes back into the dash, it's super smooth. And I looked at the mechanism and I tried to figure out how they made it so smooth. This actual sunroof or moonroof, the way that this mechanism opens, it is a massive panoramic sunroof. It looks, I mean, it's so awesome looking. It makes this cabin feel open and airy. Let's go on to technology for a second, <laughs> and actually more than a second, because I could probably do a 30 minute video about all the tech and safety features in here. But I'm gonna say this, if you're somebody who is not tech savvy, you're gonna get in here and it's gonna be, your mind's gonna be blown by this. I don't, I don't care how much dealer training you're gonna do. I don't care how much you screw around with this. It's gonna take time to get used to all of this. This MMI that they call it, or HCI, which is human machine interface, how you interact with this, you really have three or four ways to do it. This center screen is amazingly clear. clear. I mean, it looks really good, especially from the driving position. Day, night, polarized sunglasses, it's always looking good. Now, the thing is, is it's completely customizable. This is run by an NVIDIA uh, Tegra processor. It is a quad core just for this center screen. And then you have the pop-up screen in the middle, which are completely independent from each other. So really you have three ways to control all this. The steering wheel controls, which have left and right to go through the menus. And then you have left and right option menus to toggle the options on the left side of the screen or the right side of the screen. Uh, that's where it's gonna confuse most people. You have a back button and a view button. The view button kind of maximizes and minimizes what screen you're in and kind of gives you more options. Your right side is more traditional. You have a steering wheel heater, your nav button, your phone, your voice activation, and your volume, rotary knob, and your left to right track selector. Basic stuff, the right side, left stuff, not so much. The center console, you have your drive select, so you can go through options such as comfort mode. You have your uh, dynamic mode, individual mode, and then off-road. Now the thing is with this car, you don't have, well, you don't have uh, externally adjustable or electronically controlled damper, so it doesn't do anything with the suspension. Something else I really like about the HVAC in here is this kind of vent control for this huge center vent in here. You enable it and it kind of gives you diffused air. It's not like you're not just blasted by one vent here. It kind of does a good job in controlling the temperature for each side more independently. A lot of times when you get in dual climate control cars, Somebody's still hot or cold no matter what temperature you set for either side. This vehicle does feet and upper like body super good. Comfort in the front seat area is really good. You have heated and cooled seats. The cooled seats work tremendously well in the summer, especially when it's hot. I really like that. Your second row behind you is superbly comfort. The seats kind of move forward, back, they recline. And then to get back in the third row, you actually can have to fold the seats uh, kind of down into a downward position and that's kind of where this falls apart and most SUVs do honestly without having a sliding door like a minivan that third row is always going to be compromised uh, I don't know of any real adults that are going to want to sit back in that third row but again it's probably mostly for kids or smaller people the conclusion 
This is one of the better cars I've been in the past year and a half in terms of overall ride quality, stability, just you have this luxury refined feeling when you're behind the wheel. If you're somebody that does a lot of commuting, somebody that goes on a lot of trips, this is such a comfortable place to be in. The level of just quality from most of the parts in here are going to impress you. The technology and safety features all work surprisingly well for how complicated it all is. Now, yes, I think some of the, the gadgets and tech in here have become overbearing. I think it's gonna confuse a lot of people, but if you're somebody that wants that, you're gonna be super impressed. Everybody that looks at this is kind of wowed by it, but they all say the same thing. How much is that gonna to cost to fix? So that comes to the last part. If you're gonna buy this, I would definitely lease it. Uh, you know, I would lease this and go for the prestige package, blow this thing out with every option, the Bang & Olufsen sound, the uh, height adjustable dampers, all the gadgets, and just have some fun with it because it's that type of car. And just drive your friends around, jam everybody in here and make it a really fun driving experience. For me, I really enjoyed my time with it.